Okay, there we go. That was easy. Um, uh, hey everybody, uh, my name is Elliot. So uh, I don't know how many people here knew what the Mutablox was when it was still alive. Well, a few. I'm very sorry if anybody bought things that didn't receive it. <laughs> now we're actually on the way, even though no one believes us. <laughs> um, so while we're not actually still there anymore, um, and uh, now at a different company doing different things, um, the real point of this talk was so halfway through the sphere development, which we'll get to in a second, we switch languages. Um, so what were we building? Very cool little um, hardware. Uh, had a whole bunch of radios in it. Um, beautiful <laughs> unicorns and things. And we're building this. And like the first version, it was done in Node originally. So for anyone who uninitiated, we were building a smart home controller that was basically in-home computation. So we had an ARM Cortex-A8. Uh, with about 512 megs of RAM, and it was going to run a stack that would abstract all the smart devices in your home and give you one app interface on your smart home. And then also we had a very cool uh, EM field gesture controlled interface built into the actual device. Um, and the first Ninja block, so this is the Ninja Sphere. We did a we did a Kickstarter for that. The first Ninja block, essentially the same hardware, not a lot of the same radios, uh, but it's all written in Node.js, which I'm going to get to in a second. So uh, yeah. Um, first one, all in Node. So the first Ninja block, all one process. We had uh, the main main controller thing loading up Node plugins, but they're all sharing, you know, Node modules. They're all sharing a process. Um, yay, memory, uh, <laughs> boostability. Because <laughs> so I mean, both blocks and Sphere was all completely open source. All MIT. We're we're just giving. The entire thing away, which was great because you had loads of people on the forums writing all these drivers and things. But uh, some of these drivers were not brilliant for staying up more than you know a few hours. And usually it didn't matter. Like the, the normal node way of going about this is just to go, "Hey, it's going to go down. Don't worry about it. It'll come back up. It's fine." And on the server, that's fine. And on, sometimes on, on the little thing, that's okay too. But um, when the thing is constantly reading the 50,000 files that are in these node module things on a little arm from an SD, it can start to get annoying when, especially, I mean, we hear stories even now, because we've kept all the, the cloud services up, of it might go down because of some DNS problem or something, and all of a sudden people can't get into their home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they should, have been, they, they should not have been using it for that, but. You know, we, we give them all these 433 devices and they connect it up to their you know, switches and things and people do it. So yeah. And it works almost all the time. Almost all the time. Almost all the time. And that, and that is exactly what you want for entry into your home. <laughs> you want it to work almost all the time. Yeah, so... The issue that kind of informing this is that with one process and everybody writing drivers that would just be kind of be pulled in is that we had so sort of at that time we had maybe five developers who were simultaneously um, like we they would we would get people on the forum saying this isn't working I can't figure out why and so our developers were spending time kind of analyzing somebody else's code and then submitting pull requests for their kind of like hacked up driver to make that kind of functional so it didn't break down our entire stack yeah, and we loved we loved them for it yeah we loved them for it but there were times where people were trying to talk about the same devices or you know. Things happen. Um, so for Sphere, we, we created a beautiful utopia. Um, all it's all JSON, all schemed stuff over MQTT. So it's a lot of like separate processes talking to each other, and it's all like defined. Everything's lovely. Um, it didn't. It started to become an issue because even running nothing, even running you know, something sitting there with a timeout, we'd, we'd be getting 10, 12 meg processes for absolutely nothing. Um, and when you start having one process per driver plus extra processes to run the, the, the connection to the cloud and, and all that, um, things start to get a problem. We 
maybe you could talk better about this, the uh, trying to work out what was happening with node processes that just rising in memory for no apparent reason. Yeah, we had some very, very smart people um, just stare at code. And, and, and so this was the thing, right? Like, admittedly, maybe using kind of 10 JavaScript VMs on an embedded device is not the most smartest move uh, on the face of it. Um, we did the math and we thought we could get enough of it up that it should mostly work. And at some point, we'll rewrite it on C++. Again, online. mostly is all you need when you're trying to get into your home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but the problem with that was that as soon as we put anything marginal uh, volume through it, uh, like uh, the signals coming off the BLE driver, so it's, you know every device is constantly pinging, you know BLE packets, and so you want to listen to as much of that as humanly possible. Uh, you put that through a little node process, and what you would see is you would have very little, very little JavaScript. It's just basically pulling in information and pu pushing it out, and you you know that would be talking to another process that is basically just pulling data in and out. And the JavaScript was very simple, and it would, you know, admittedly have a lot of node modules because that's just sort of node. And then you would see your VM heap just kind of sitting there, static, and your resident set size just growing and growing and growing. And you have no idea why. And you go to the core contributors and you say, "I've read through all the JavaScript, and I've actually read through all the C++ code as well, and I've instrumented everything, and I still don't know why this thing is just exploding in memory." And then you ask some of the core contributors, and they can't figure it out. So you just kind of you kind of get to the point where, like, well, we're trying, but like, maybe it's not us. Like, maybe, you know, <laughs> like I don't know what you know. Like, we're not sort of, you know. <laughs> yeah. You, you're, we're using, yeah, where you're instrumenting the C, the C code. It's yeah. So we, we got down that got down roads that were probably better left less traveled. Node is fine. Like, we never changed the node that was running on the servers. No problem. Thing goes down once in a while. And we don't care. It's got, so gigs around, whatever rising problem we've got through us or through anything else, we don't care because it just disappears, comes back up, all good. But you have different problems on these little ARM devices, um, especially one thing we found was um, so we had a little micro SD that's in the, inside the sphere. In the ninja block, you could take that out. Um, it's fine. If the thing died, you could take it out. When it's embedded in the thing in the heart, in, like at the factory, we start running updates. We're pushing things down with that, and it's you know putting out all the node modules because we're not we're not building on the thing. I mean, it's like we, we pile it all in, we build the thing on, on the cloud server on the ARM thing, and then send it down. Because otherwise, nothing's going to work. But writes. That many writes to SD, very, 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 very bad idea. Um, so we had these little SD cards, and during without dev kits, we could replace them. But still, we just found this is this is a bad, bad problem. Um, and it's kind of not very easily solved. So we came up with loads of different ways where we we're going to, you know, put it in a single file and then have it reading in a virtual sort of thing. But you're kind of getting past where you want to be on these little ARM things. So why did we decide to move to Go? Um, halfway through development of a device that was already a little bit late at that point? It was, gonna, it was on its way to being late. On its way to being late. Um, yeah, mem memory usage was, was first up, first cab off the rank there. Um, uh, CO? Apparently, much better than whatever Node was doing to connect your native stuff up, up to these these things. Um, and with the things we were writing, we, we, we wrote drivers for um, connecting up to Zigbee and Z-Wave, Bluetooth, controlling the Wi-Fi stuff. Um, we had the 16 by 16 LED matrix plus the gesture controller, like the mid-air gesture thing where you're just spinning and tapping and so on. We had a lot of things that were talking to native things that weren't easily done. I mean, some had serial port stuff, obviously, but there was a lot that just had C or C++ drivers that we had to you know, connect to or something. So that helped. Um, yeah, single binary. That was nice. That was lovely pushing down that onto these SD cards. Um, because the SD cards were fine. They had enough space. We, we didn't have a problem. We could put down extra ones and make sure we weren't writing over the same thing. We, we had no problem there. but. Yeah, that was good. Plus, obviously, the GoFundMe mascot was actually kind of neat, I feel. 
I mean, to, con to convincing us as a company, it wasn't nothing. Why not? Um, so this was, when, when did we start? 2013. 14. 14. Right. So it was about July 2014. I'm not sure what version it was. 1, 2, maybe? I don't know, 1, 2, 1, 3. Um, definitely, there were some things. And we had we had Spark Arts, we had this guy Mark Wolf, this, our CTO, that knew about everything, still couldn't find us, you know, the good way to debug and, and actually work out the problems with the things. I, I understand that's probably gotten better by now. Um, I feel like <coughs> we'll probably hear about that in the next one, maybe. Um, there was less IoT code out there, so with Node, you had people just hacking up things to talk to a billion different devices. Um, Go, much less so. But really, we found that the people who were writing this stuff were writing bad code anyway. That we were either having to rewrite or we're pushing out, like, you know, we're putting pull requests out to everything else out there. So it kind of evened out. We ended up in, in the Go one because we were able to write better and quicker. We ended up rewriting a lot of stuff. Like, we, we wrote Node Zigbee and Node Z-Wave and, I'm sorry, Go Zigbee, Go Z-Wave and we wrote all of them. Cube, Billy, yeah. Cube, Billy and all the different devices we wrote the first Go ones of that and it's probably been better, but we put it all out there as MIT. Um, only one of our developers knew Go. Uh, that was not me. So my first thought was, why are we changing language? Um, but, frankly, I was, I was wrong. It's fine. We picked it up pretty quick. I mean, you can talk about it. So you were CEO at the time. Yeah, uh, so uh, when you're faced with the fact that your entire device, so, I mean, it got to the point where we had a director that was basically just sniping processes after they got to like 15 megabytes. Because we'd kind of done enough math that, you know, at a certain volume, it's probably only going to die after like 45 minutes. And we could probably survive 45 minutes for that process, but not that process. But it was a very dark place. And so um, the, the realization that this is obviously not production, we cannot actually ship this and put this in anybody's home, uh, dawned us. So um, yeah, Wolf, you go, uh, no one else did, uh, but you know, the decree came down from on high that we are now a go shop. So everyone get Googling very quickly. Let us know if you need to, uh, you know, what you need. Yeah, I thought the, the first tip you said was, uh, yeah, don't, don't look for go, look for go, like that helped. <laughs> that, that made so much sense. <laughs> that made life much, much easier. Um, so we did it. That was a pleasure to work with. Um, I think in our particular case, with the way that we built the Node app, it made it a lot easier because we had, um, it was JSON RPC, everything had schemas, everything was organized. We didn't need to replace everything at once. We would like slice out a single driver, put it in there, and it would work with the rest. And all of a sudden, every time we did that, things got a little better. So, um, I, yeah, like after, after working, <laughs> after working in Node stuff, and everyone's, I mean, I want semicolons, okay? Just that's that's enough. Um, so yeah, as I said, we wrote everything. I mean, there were little bits of bits of stuff out there. Um, I think someone had done the first part of a Wemo thing, but we ended up rewriting that as well. We, we put it all out there. Um, yeah. So because we're connecting up all to this this stuff, it only works some of the time. So we ended up with what it was a pretty cool system for doing all like continuous integration builds. That were being pushed out to um, boxes. What was, what's the class? Oh, Odroid. Odroid. That Odroid boxes to uh, build these um, uh, Go binaries for us, and then uh, you know, wrap them up as uh, apps packages so that we could push them down. We had a great system for you know the different app repos and being able to push it down so so that different people could have their uh, sphere and you know stable and maybe you want to use this with your house, probably not, but maybe. And then some people, it's like, I don't care if the house burns down, I just want to see the newest thing. I like it when the new spinny thing arrives. So, um, yeah, so Seagull worked very well, as far as I can tell, but also I didn't really.
the result. What actually happened? So at, it took us about a month and a half, I think, until the last node process was gone. Maybe, maybe a little bit more because it was some node one that nobody cared about because at that point we'd already gotten all the savings and the thing was fine and everything was happy, so everyone kind of ignored it. Um, it wasn't actually five megaseconds on that, that other thing, but it, it was going up. Um, every single one of them, about two, three meg a piece. And when, you know, 512 or 256, whatever it was, that was very important and it meant we could, you know, ship a lot more stuff. Yeah, I mean, we saw, you know, some of the some of the busiest processes that were putting out sort of 56 on this tiny little arm box that is a single core and has, you know, uh, you know, not a lot of grunt to have sort of 10, 15 processes that are all just sitting at two or three megabytes stable for months. And no matter how busy they got, whether they're putting in five messages a second through the BLE, for example, I mean, that was just complete chalk and cheese compared to kind of where we come from uh, with, uh, with Nova. Yeah, I mean, we had all these limits on. So we, we were doing um, uh, location-based stuff using BLE. So had all these, what we had these uh, little USB devices plugged in around the home that were meshing to bring back every BLE advertisement back to the bed, right? Um, before, when we were using Node to, to get this stuff, because we're sending it up to the cloud to run like machine learning things, um, we, we started doing it on the box to uh, uh, like merge them together and so on, because we just saw this memory and stuff. Turned it all off when the Go one came. Just turned it all off at the time, sending every single message through. I mean, probably strong people's internet connections. That's fine. I mean, <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's the uh, sort of general vibe of what happened there. Um, and now we've got the very small little pitch at the end for we really need a very good Go guy now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, yes, obviously. Um, so, okay, so pretty much every blockchain thing is written in Go. Um, we're playing with blockchain and Ethereum and bankers. Um, <laughs> right, because love go. It's fine. It's cool. It's cool. Um, and obviously, there's plenty of unicorns and, and, and cats and things. Um, we're fun. And we're happy. What we need is some uh, clever people to come and help us finish this thing. Thank you very much.